Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Philip. Today's video is the continuation of the electrical wiring series, concentrating on converting a single outlet to a dual setup. I was very surprised when I couldn't find any videos on this topic, so here it is. If this video does not answer your questions, please take a look at my other videos on the electricity and wiring identification. I show how electricity travels and gets split up, and also go more in depth about the types of outlets. I will include the links in the description below. Also, please be very careful while working with electricity. I strongly recommend that you use a multimeter throughout all of your interaction with exposed wiring. If you don't understand something, please research it further or contact an electrician. Never just start poking around without understanding the basic concepts. So let's get back to the topic at hand. Infrequently, you can find single outlets in your house or whatever property you manage. In my example, I have an outlet in the garage, which is set up to power the sprinkler system. So what if you want to convert it into a double so you can power another device? So let's go over the needed steps for this process. Step one, identify the type of a circuit that you have and how many lights and outlets are already on it. Plug in a light fixture into the outlet you're trying to replace. The light should be on. Turn off the circuit breakers one at a time until the light turns off. Now you know the circuit breaker it is attached to. If the outlet is in another room, you can plug in a radio so you can hear if it turns off through the walls. Now look at the circuit breaker in question. It should have a number on it, 15 or 20. This is the amperage of the circuit, and it determines how many light fixtures and outlets it can handle, and what kind of outlet you can install on it. 15 amp outlets are designed for regular home use and can be identified by parallel vertical slots. 20 amp outlets have a horizontal slot added. These are designed to handle devices with a higher demand for power, such as table saws and other power tools. 15 amp outlet can be installed on a 20 amp circuit, but the 20 amp outlet should not be installed on a 15 amp circuit. In my case, just by looking at the existing outlet, I already know that this is a 20 amp circuit. Since we're adding an extra receptacle, that means that we have to make sure that the circuit can handle the additional load. This is when the amperage becomes important. Technically, you can put however many outlets on the circuit, but once you start loading it by plugging in stuff, it will get overloaded and it will trip. This is why you want to stick with the National Electric Code recommendation. While it doesn't limit the amount of outlets you can install on a 20 amp circuit, it recommends that each outlet and light fixture have 1.5 amps dedicated to it, with a maximum of 80% use of the circuit. So here's what it means. Take the total amperage of the circuit and divide it by 1.5, then multiply it by 80%. The whole number is the total recommended amount of lights and outlets on the circuit. So that's 10 for a 20 amp and 8 for a 15 amp circuit. Here's another way to look at it. If you have power hungry appliances, you should limit the number of receptacles on that circuit. Most appliances and light fixtures list the watts requirements on the label, so you can add them all up to see what the circuit needs. If the label shows the power needs in amps, you can convert the number by multiplying the stated amps by the voltage in your system. So 2 amps would translate into 240 watts at 120 volts and 480 watts at 240 volts. Some appliances, like microwaves and dishwashers, require a dedicated outlet or even a dedicated circuit because they can draw a lot of power during startup compared to their everyday operation. Going back to the 80% recommendation, on a conventional 120 volt 20 amp circuit with a draw of 2400 watts, the safe operation is at 16 amps which is 1920 watts and is 80% of the breaker tripping limit of 2400 watts. 15 amp circuits maximum draw is 2000 watts, so 80% safe operation threshold is under 1600. I hope this makes sense. With that in mind, you need to identify all of the lights and outlets connected to the circuit breaker you found earlier. 
Usually the breakers are set up by areas and you can pretty easily find out which outlets are being affected. Use the light and radio method. Step 2. Once you found them all, counted them, and the math I went over earlier allows you to proceed, we can move forward with the switch out. The hardest part of the process is now behind you and everything should be straightforward from here on. Let's get to the wires and work with them safely. This video is portraying the grounded outlet which has been a standard in the US since the 1960s. Ungrounded outlets still exist, but you should definitely contact a licensed electrician if you plan to expand that kind of circuit. If you have watched my video on the multiple wire outlet connection, you will recall the wiring diagrams where you can either have three wires in the box or the box can have additional transfer wires, moving the current further down the line. Those usually come in additional pairs. So inside the outlet box, you can normally expect to see three, five or seven wires. If you are replacing a single outlet, most likely you will have just three, a ground, hot and a load. And this is exactly what I will show you in this video. If you have more than three wires in the outlet box, you might want to watch my other videos to help you with identifying each wire's intended purpose. So with the circuit breaker off, we remove the cover plate from the outlet to reveal a standard electrical box, which easily fits a dual plug outlet. Now is the time to get your multimeter out and set it on the AC voltage setting. Look at the wires and how they are connected to the outlet. First, you need to find the ground. It is either a bare or a green wire. The rest of the wire colors can be different and you should always correctly identify what they do without relying just on colors. But the standard color coding is green or bare for ground, black for hot and white for load, but always verify. Place the black lead of the multimeter on the ground wire connection screw and the red one on either of the other connections. Verify that there is zero reading and move the red lead to the second connection. It should also provide no reading. Now you know that the circuit is off and you can safely work with it. Anytime that you plan to touch the wires, you always want to repeat this process. It might sound tedious, but it can save your life. Go back to the circuit breaker and turn it back on and be extremely careful when testing the live circuit. To do this, place the black multimeter lead on the ground connection, just like we did in the step before, and the red one on any of the other two screws. One of these connections will show up with a full reading, and this is your hot wire. The remaining third wire is the load, which closes the loop back to the circuit breaker and should not have any readings on it. Remember which one is which and power down the circuit. Loosen the screws and remove the wires. Now bring in a dual plug outlet that you are trying to install. I am using a GFCI protected outlet that you might have seen me remove from another location in another video. Look on the back of the outlet and the installation instructions for the connection identification markings. There will be three or five connection screws three for the regular line connection and two for an optional transfer connection. Even though it is labeled as load connection set, it is not the same as the load wire we identified earlier inside our electrical box. These two screws forward the power on to the additional outlets or lights. With the three wire connection, you want to disregard the load connection screws and work with the line connections only. If your outlet is brand new, the load terminals should be covered with tape, specifically to stop you from plugging in wrong connections. You connect only what is exposed. The brass screw on the line connection is usually the hot connection, and the silver screw is the load line. To be absolutely sure, verify that it is indeed so in the installation manual of the purchased outlet. Whenever possible, wrap the wire clockwise around the screw before tightening it. This ensures that the wire will not unwrap while the outlet is pushed in into the box. In the case where the outlet will not have any movement or other switches sharing the box and you don't have to worry about the wires getting knocked out of place, 
you can use the push-in contacts if they have a plate pressing on them. With all three wires connected, plug in a light into the outlet and turn on the circuit breaker. If the light came on, power off the circuit, secure the outlet to the box and cover it up with a plate. If it did not, you need to go back in with a multimeter and double check that you are getting power on the correct connections. A word of advice. As you modernize your switches and outlets, you can also upgrade the faceplates. You can get them in larger sizes, which can help in covering the imperfections of the wall around the box opening. And this is it. Now you know how easy it is to switch from a single outlet to a double, as long as you have the proper wire testing tools. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified of the new uploads. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all on the flip side.